Good morning, everyone. We'll be starting the session very shortly. Please stay on. Well.
हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर हेलो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर या गुड मॉर्निंग प्रोफेसर विवेक सो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल सो आई वेलकम यू फॉर दिस फाइव डेज प्रोग्राम्स ऑफ इन एडवांसेस इन हाईवे टेक्नोलॉजी एंड ट्रैफिक सिस्टम्स सो वेलकम यू ऑल अगेन टू द सेकंड डे सो वी विल स्टार्ट विथ आवर फर्स्ट सेशन our first session resource person is dr rajat restogi so welcome you sir for this program thank you so before getting into the program i'll just have a brief introduction of dr rajat restogi dr rajat restogi is presently working as professor in department of civil engineering at indian institute of technology roorkee he has a research and teaching experience of 31 years in transportation engineering he did phd from iit bombay and me highways and be civil engineering from punjab engineering college chandigarh his research interests are in pedestrian and non motorized traffic travel behavior and its modeling integration of transportation system policy analysis traffic flow analysis and road safety he has published over 60 papers in journals and over 80 papers in conferences the journals have an impact factor as high as 4.082 his work is well cited by other researchers with more than 1200 citation with h index 19 and i10 index 32 he has supervised seven phd theses and six phd theses are ongoing he has guided 66 mtech theses and projects he has delivered more than 70 expert lectures in activities organized by government and other institutions like iahe aa euk ldc uk police etc he is a member of different professional bodies like irc trg of india iut igs etc he had received commendation medal for technical paper by irc in its annual meeting at guwahati in 2014 he is recipient of hrd fellowship for higher studies he is co convener of g6 that is multi modal transportation system a member of h1 transportation planning and traffic engineering and h8 urban roads and streets committee of indian road congress and he is a member of anf 20 ab 60 and round round about committee of transportation research board of us he is on board of studies for civil engineering of rajasthan technical university also he has contributed to different projects at national and regional level like rrts ap andhra pradesh capital city plan priority planning safe truck movements in industries design safety and operational safety audit of different nh and ring roads etc the work carried out under his guidance has been incorporated in the revision of irc 103 guidelines for pedestrian facilities in 2012 and now in 2020 he worked as a core member in the development of indian highway capacity manual the present work on escalators pedestrians and public transportation will be of value for relevant irc documents or codes with this small introduction i welcome our honorable uh, source person professor uh, rajat restogi to give his talk over to you sir okay thanks uh, professor vivek uh, thank you for, sir uh, thank you for introducing me but uh, such kind words uh, i'm going to share my screen uh, 
okay oh please sir uh, who can share only host or all participants means sir uh, it asking me who can share only host or all participants one minute sir all participants sir all participants okay and who can is so no no you are changing the settings i guess sir at the bottom you will see share screen a green button yes i uh, press that sir yeah you will see your screen the presentation screen click on that no it's coming as uh, advanced sharing options who can share who can't share so uh, once you go with the share screen button yeah ah, okay i think you are clicking on the arrow on the right side just click on the box the uh, bigger one the bigger box the button entire button share screen button you will see a pop up window but that pop up is coming like this only okay fine but it's i was clicking on the arrow actually arrow yes sir yeah so now you can share your screen click okay. on that uh, yes sir but okay so it's visible yes, yes. Sir. you can put it in slide show mode here yeah. wait yes okay so uh, good morning to all of you who are present in this uh, faculty development program uh, that's on advances in highway technology and traffic systems and uh, i'm thankful to professor vivek for uh, having invited me to this program and to you uh, a talk on uh, pedestrian facilities in design and when we were discussing about that uh, i am audible to you yes sir okay so uh, when we are discussing about that what needs to be presented on this pedestrian facilities and design and uh, uh, one thing came up is that we have uh, recent revisions of irc 103 and then indo scm has also come up in 2017 and that's where what are the changes which have happened maybe uh, those are the things which can be talked uh, uh in this particular presentation so i'm not going to uh, basically talk about uh, many of the things uh, which have been given in uh, these uh, uh guidelines what i am going to talk about is few things which have changed in uh, irc 103 and indo scm and uh, as compared to uh, the irc 103 2012 actually that was the base uh, with which we were designing the facilities for pedestrians now if we look at uh, the evolution of uh, this particular code or the guidelines for pedestrians then what you find is you know, there are a lot of policies and acts which have come uh, uh, from say i am putting it here from 2006 but we have things uh, before that also but uh, uh, probably 2006 onwards there has been more of uh, uh, to say the emphasis which has been given to the vulnerable road users and that's where uh, pedestrians and the people who are having certain disabilities or are differently abled uh, that has been taken care of and that has also been included in the guidelines so in that direction if we look at the first one is like uh, national urban transport policy uh, which has talked about uh, uh, the inclusion of pedestrian and cycle facilities in the various dprs and the development plans of cities and uh, that was uh, one uh, big uh, uh, cited uh, document which is being used as such then there has been different other things happening at the global level like the un convention of rights of persons with disabilities act in 2007 and goal 11.2 which was under sustainable development goals adopted by united nations member states in 2015 then uh, there are local policies which have come up like in pune they came up with a pedestrian policy in 2016 then in 2016 we have a uh, rights of uh, persons with disabilities act then uh, there were again uh, the local level or the regional level interventions in terms of like non motorized transport policy for chennai it came in 2014 and coimbatore it came in 2017 and apart from that there is a complete street framework toolkit which can be used to, for the provision of the type of streets which needs to be there along with the uh, 
uh, how we are going to implement or maintain those things. So uh, that's what is uh, uh, we can say a uh, lot many things have happened in that direction. And the culmination of this is that when we started discussing about the latest uh, uh, revision of IRC 103 uh, that is started in 2019 and 2020. So uh, we have taken care of all of these things. So in that sense, uh, let us uh, uh, see that what we are actually interested to look at. So here, when we are trying to review these two documents and see that how the things have different with respect to the previous ones, uh, what we are going to look at is uh, mainly the design uh, interventions which can be there or we may be talking about uh, the facility environment as such because uh, uh, facility environment has not been given much emphasis in the previous uh, guidelines but when you look at uh, uh, Indo-SCM, Indo-SCM is more of uh, having a technical content in it and it's again not giving more emphasis to or some emphasis to the environment of a facility but then that has been taken care of in IRC 103 uh, which is uh, probably going to be in 2022. Uh, so uh, that's the where you can get some idea and uh, being in Bangalore, you must be looking at the various improvements which are happening at the local level there or uh, being from uh, south as I have given you examples that you have Chennai, you have Coimbatore or maybe many other cities like that where uh, interventions have been done at local authority levels. So uh, therein, uh, some of the things have come up as good practices in these uh, guidelines too. So let us look at uh, these and see that how the things are changing. So we start with the pedestrian design standards and in the case of pedestrian design standards uh, we will be talking about uh, that uh, uh, there is a slight change in the principles of design. When you talk about the pedestrian facilities then uh, we usually talk about five or six uh, elements which should be there uh, but then what is the change that's what we're going to look at then facility alloys, how it has been changed or uh, is there a change in terms of uh, attribute uh, which needs to be considered but then we are, we are looking at the two documents so are they complementary to each other that's what we are going to talk there. Then composite facility is one of the thing that each and every requirement of a pedestrian if we are providing that then how we are going to assimilate all of those things within the same space is what probably uh, we'll try to look at. And then as I said, that uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, emphasis on providing the facilities which are universally applicable and uh, uh, universally adaptable as well as uh, easily uh, usable by all. And that's where the requirement of uh, differently able peoples also needs to be taken care of. And then illumination is one other aspect which has an implication towards safety and security of uh, pedestrians. Uh, and then crossing facilities is another important area uh, that uh, we are going to see in this work. So when we talk about the principles of facilities, then that is, uh, uh, these are the five elements which have been talked in the new guidelines uh, which says that we need to look at the comfort of the user so that's the one key aspect and uh, comfort of the user is in terms of uh, say the usability also because that is not separately being written here when you say comfort and when you talk about a sidewalk whether the sidewalk is usable or not whether the sidewalk is adequate or not in its size or width so those are the things which also will bring in the comfort for the use. Then continuity is one another aspect which has been a hindrance in the use of these facilities uh, for long. And still this is one issue uh, which most of the time is not being tackled in the right manner. So this has again been emphasized that we need to look at the continuity of facilities across the length and width of, of an area or of a city and if uh, that's not being ensured, then obviously there is going to be a conflict of uh, pedestrians with the vehicles if pedestrians use uh, the, uh, the space being dedicated to the vehicles. 
One aspect which is being added is uh, livability. Now, livability aspect uh, uh, says that though you have a road, you have provided a sidewalk, uh, but uh, everything is clumsy, chaotic in nature, and uh, whatever type of developments are there, means you don't feel uh, aesthetics out of it. So uh, we need to look at this particular aspect also that the area should be livable and uh, there are livability index. You must be knowing that global level, uh, those type of uh, categorizations are there across the countries to see that which particular country falls in a much higher level and that's where we lack. So this is one uh, uh, aspect which is being added here uh, as an act additional thing that safety and security are the two things so safety means we are talking about the interaction of the pedestrian with the uh, vehicles and how we can uh, improve upon that so that uh, uh, people being vulnerable in nature do not get any say a minor injury or major injury or fatality and that's where both the three facilities needs to be looked at the facility along the road and the facility crossing the carriageway and security is another aspect where you need to see that uh, people should feel comfortable psychologically also in an area so that they do not uh, get scared of using a particular area or a facility. So these are the things uh, which in a different uh, fashion has been incorporated here. And that's where what it says now is that we should try to have a network of uh, non-motorized facilities or a network of pedestrian facilities which uh, somehow we have been advocating but what's lacking in the guidelines and that's where what you can see here is that uh, uh, in this case it is trying to show a city space and uh, in, within that city space uh, we are having a dedicated spaces for vehicular traffic and other spaces for the non-motorized traffic including pedestrians and uh, we're trying to have a list of uh, interactions between them and that's what is being ensured specifically in the inner areas if you see here and this so uh, that's uh, the type of approach it is advocating the other approach it is advocating is with respect to the use of uh, road space and that should be equitable in nature it should not happen that the vehicle which is being provided here for which a carriageway is being also provided it becomes so big in size then it takes its space from others so that's an idea and that's where you can see the icons being shown that they are of same nature same size but when you have a, a say motorized vehicle they are in the center and all type of motorized vehicle a multimodal system has been talked here and then when you have the facilities for non-motorized, then they should be at some height. As you can see here, they should be at some height. So cycle track is at some height uh, as compared to the carriageway. And then the uh, pedestrian facility should be at some further height. And that's what is a type of segregation and equitable use of spaces uh, we should talk in our design. So that's a, is a being a, uh, you can see emphasize in terms of uh, pictograms also and uh, that makes sense in a sense in a way that uh, you get an idea much faster than the text which is being written somewhere and in the same direction it also speaks of uh, having this inverted uh, triangle and when you are going in this direction then what you find is you are going towards a green transportation modes and that's where you have a non-motorized vehicles and the pedestrians. You are there at the highest level of uh, that green transportation. But when you talk about the private vehicles, then you are at the lowest level. So that's the philosophy of design, which we are trying to look at. Now, when you look at uh, another change here is that uh, if, if you remember, when you talk about the pedestrian walking speeds, uh, uh, Professor Vivek uh, worked on uh, pedestrian facilities and the crossing facilities, but uh, his contemporary uh, previous person, uh, uh, T. Lango, who worked on the speeds along the uh, carriageway on sidewalks. Then in that case, uh, the speed was somewhere around 1.17 meter per second on an average. And that was the one single value which was given. But here what you can see is that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, 
type of categorization which has been taken from different uh, uh, guidelines. If you see here in the first one, like it is from uh, adult man and or adult woman, uh, which is from indo asium being carried and it's been also taken here. So now that's what is a type of compatibility, as I was saying, but when you have the uh, guidelines which are not old enough, uh, which needs to have a revision, then we should have similar things available across the guidelines and so that the uh, though it's a duplication, but then uh, it's not a, a condition where you are having a contrary information with respect to each other. Then here, the another category talks about uh, the persons with the certain assistance and that assistance can be in different forms. And there it says that uh, it can be considered as 0 0.3 to 0.5 meters per second. The point here is that if you have more of the people like this in an area, then we should consider these type of speeds and for design of certain facilities, probably yeah, these, are, these type of values needs to be taken care of. Similarly, when you talk about a wheelchair, obviously it increases quite high. And then there are three cases here related to infant and toddlers, and that's where the changes are there in the walking speed. So that's a one, one area where the changes are there. And then when you look at the indo -SCM, then what indo -SCM has done is that it has used land uses here. And you can see that for different land uses, they are providing the mean speeds at the footpath in meter per minute. And uh, here, the recreational area is having the lowest value. And uh, uh, if you look at in the residential area, then it's the highest value. So that's a additional classification is being given. And of course, it's not being repeated in this manner in the IRC 103, because that's already available. Similarly, in the case of uh, road configurations, it is talking of two lane undivided, four lane divided, six lane divided, and eight lane divided systems. And there for male and female, um, average crossing speeds again have been defined. Um, that's what you can see. <coughs> uh, one thing which you can uh, make it out here is uh, the way the values are going up and down. So it reduces here and then it starts increasing back. So somewhere on a four lane divided system, you are getting the value uh, which is uh, lower as compared to other. But though there is no uh, justifications being provided, but uh, maybe you can look at in this direction and try to find it out at what can be the probable reasons of uh, having this type of a behavior. Walking speed in indo SCM is also being talked with respect to two other facilities, that is stairs and foot over bridges. And again, here they have given values as mean and median. And uh, of course, they are quite less because uh, you are going up so or down. So uh, the up and down movements, they are taken together, but they have not <coughs> given the values separately for that. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So uh, this is uh, one additional set of information which is available in the SCM. So that's what you can see is uh, that come uh, together, IRC 103 and in the SCM is providing a quite wide uh, gamut of uh, walking speeds for different conditions and scenarios. Then if I look at the different type of facilities, so there the first one is like guardrails. If you remember that uh, it used to tell that your guardrails needs to be provided at locations where there's a lot of pedestrian movements and uh, you have to remove the illegal, the illegal crossings. You have to provide the direction to the pedestrians to cross at a particular location. Then they have to be placed at a certain distance away from the edge of the footpath at up to certain height. All those things were there. So one change which is coming here is with respect to the distance from the edge of the footpath, which was 150 mm in the previous guidelines, has been changed to 250 mm. And this 250 mm can be read in terms of uh, the shy distance or in terms of the safety margin, which needs to be there. Uh, as a minimum value. When you talk about any other facility, then we talk of uh, 25 centimeters as the minimum value, and that's what is being brought in here also. And then it also talks about that if you have a continuous uh, implementation of the guardrails, then you need to provide some locations where the pedestrians can 
cross over to the other side if it is required so. So it says that uh, there's an additional thing that gap at every 20 meters should be provided in such cases. The another uh, inclusion is a braille sign board. It says that at uh, a pole at 1400 to 1600 mm above the footpath surface, we should provide these braille sign boards so that uh, people with such disabilities can utilize the footpath facilities and can cross over to the other side if so required. There is also a change in the turning radius. The turning radius, if uh, you remember, then it was six meters and 12 meters, but then now they have been brought to the local character streets as four meters. And sub arterial and arterial streets, it is being taught as a maximum nine meters. One another aspect which it is talking is uh, uh, an addition here, and that addition is in terms of a green ways. And there are a lot of uh, parks, there are a lot of uh, green water or green areas or water bodies which are available in probably any of the city. And uh, if you are looking at that, then why we cannot have a facility around it, uh, which is again a green cover and can be exclusively used by the pedestrians for either recreation or for crossing from one side to another in a good ambient, aesthetically improved environment. So uh, that's an addition uh, which is being taught here. Now, when you look at the further, uh, then it is also talking about the crossing warrants. And these crossing warrants, uh, uh, now they are replacing the previous crossing warrants. And those previous crossing warrants were talking in terms of the wait time, which is quite high, the speed, which is quite high. And there are accidents, which are five or more in a year at a particular location. Uh, so such type of information was there. And then it was also talking about the PV square, where for an undivided road, it was one into 10 to power eight, for a divided system, two into 10 to power eight were the values. So based on uh, the work which is being done, uh, uh, I can say that uh, uh, these are the things which have come from the works of uh, one of our student, uh, Udit Jain, and got incorporated now in the new code. And he is an assistant officer presently at NIT Nagpur. So it says that uh, the wait time, which was vague in sense, it is too long for pedestrians or too long for vehicles. Now it says if the pedestrians have to wait more than 45 seconds, then we need to provide the, the higher crossing facilities. Or if on a two lane or a four lane or a six lane divided road, uh, you have the vehicular flow, which is exceeding these values as being given here. And uh, mind it that these two, that is uh, the delay and the vehicular flow, they are being correlated by an equation. And so therefore, all these values of 9, 40, 12, 15, 18, 60, uh, they are related with the uh, wait time of uh, that 45 seconds. The another condition is related to the speeds. And if the speeds are more than 40, 60, or 80 kilometers per hour, respectively, for the three categories of roads, then you have to go for higher facilities, crossing facilities, or the one terminology which has been brought in, the psychological gap size. Okay, and this uh, psychological uh, gap size is being talked in seconds for again different class of facilities. And it says that if uh, there is a distance between the vehicle and the location where the pedestrian is, if that belongs to this much seconds at a particular speed, so then uh, you are going to have in a more comfortable condition. So these are the things which are getting embedded. And they're also there in terms of these uh, nomographs where you can see uh, here, this is a PV square uh, condition where you have an X axis, the peak or pedestrian flow and on Y axis, the peak or vehicular flow. And you are considering this PV square. And here you can see there is a line which is related to 45 seconds of a wait time and that culminates in two weeks equals to 943 for a two lane undivided roads. And then using these PV squares and the categorization of these PV squares, it says that you can have a zebra crossing or a raised tabletop or a signal crossing or a great separated crossing. Now, within these zebra crossings or raised tabletop crossings, <clears throat> the other criteria is related to the combination of vehicular speed and the psychological gap size. And that's where you can see they are correlated here. Okay, so uh, when we are looking at this aspect, then 
Uh, it also says that if you are in this particular area, but when you come in this one and you fall in either a low risk or a medium risk or a higher risk, then when you are crossing at medium and high risk, we should provide a, a higher category of facility as compared to Jevra in this case. That means maybe a raised condition or it may be a signal controlled condition. So uh, this is one another change and it is being given for four lane, six lane, all these cases. Uh, here, the PV square values have been given for uh, different crossing facilities and for uh, different types of uh, road configurations in terms of their carriageway, two lane, four lane, and six lane, the no facility, Jabra crossing. What you can see is that one into tens to power eight or two into tens to power eight has been considered as an initial value where there is no requirement of a facility, but as you go away and uh, above those, then you are reaching even a value of 10 is to power 10 or 10 is to power 11. And that is now coming uh, as compared to the global practice, which is there being considered, being taken. Another thing is the traffic signal uh, pedestrian phases, how we are going to do. So for 15 percentile speeds have been talked previously also. So this value remains same as such. The older pedestrians, if they are more at any location, then uh, if I remember, it was 0 0.78 meter per second has been made as 0.8 meter per second. We have brought in two these conditions related to children. So uh, in the case of children, like uh, uh, the values have been given as 0.5 meter per second, or if it is a school or recreational zone or hospital zone, then also these have been defined as 0.5 meter per second. Separately, it also speaks for the grid separated crossing warrants. And it says that, uh, of course, uh, this one, when you see uh, uh, Arman Expressway or high speed corridors where the vehicle speeds are very high, and these vehicle speeds are very high, can be taken from the previous one where we were talking about the 40, 60, or 80 kilometers per hour speed. And if there is a case where the uh, uh, there is a railway corridor and you have to cross it. In that case, also, you should have a railway over bridge. <clears throat> then if psychological gap size has reduced a lot and it is uh, 0.556 seconds for a two lane and uh, 0.77 or 0.98 seconds for a four lane or a six lane divided road respectively, uh, then we should go for a great separated crossing uh, location. Or also it speaks of in terms of the volume. When we look at these things, when you're talking about the great separated facility, crossing warrants and walking speeds and all those things, final culmination is in terms of LOS. And that's where the LOS uh, in Indo-SCM, it is being talked uh, uh, in terms of different things. The very first thing which had, it has tries to come up is a size of a body ellipse. So if you remember, uh, we used to work with the MUTCD or with the work of Fruin and uh, likewise and here now we have our own uh, guidelines in this direction where it says that if you're going without baggage then you can have a body ellipse as as small as 0.14 meter square but when you're talking about with baggage it says as 0 0.208 and if you are talking about uh, the crosswalks then uh, now instead of that psychological gap it is talking in terms of a critical gap for a two lane, four lane, six lane, and eight lane divided uh, uh, carriageways. And similarly, it is also talking about the waiting time in this case for a crosswalks for a male and female. So these are additional values which are given in the case of Indo SCM. When I look at IRC, then IRC gives uh, uh, the LOS values as LOS B and LOS C. And uh, these are given for different. Uh, uh, land uses. Um, so you can see that there are some slight change which is there across uh, these all uh, uh, land uses uh, which have come from a certain reference or a work being done in uh, some uh, academic institutions only. And uh, when you're talking about this, uh, this is uh, for a uh, uh, both directional traffic on a pedestrian footpath. And uh, if you're going for from LOSB to LOSC, then uh, and um, you will have a factor by which you can multiply it and that's uh, based on uh, uh, 
uh, the service volume. So service volume at B is around 0.5 of the maximum and at C is around 0.7 of the maximum. And considering that, then you can get uh, uh, the values here. Okay, so uh, uh, that means roughly around 1.4 is the scale which you are considering here. But when it is a unidirectional, then it becomes uh, uh, 1.5 times of the values which have been given here. Here you can see in terms of an illumination, it speaks of uh, uh, with respect to height, with respect to spacing. So what is in height and uh, spacing is being talked in terms of a certain percent of uh, uh, that height. And that's what is also being culminated here on the basis of those factors. Uh, here you can see that whole height and the spacing has been defined for different areas. And you can have a one single installation as being shown here, or if uh, the width of a road is more and you need to have a higher a height for uh, illumination on the roadside or that is on the carriageway side, then we need to have another illumination facility for the pedestrians. So their uh, security more as well as the safety at an intersection point. Here, what you can see is that uh, this is a facility where a footpath, uh, where is zebra crossing is there, and now you are reaching here. Now, so when you are reaching here, and uh, this facility is at some height, so this facility is at a height of 150 mm with respect to the carriageway, and that's where you need to provide uh, uh, this ramp. And this ramp previously it was one in 12, which being changed to one in 15 because it was told that on an international level then these accessibility guidelines they speak of one in 15 slopes rather than one in 12 slopes so that has been a change but uh, this remains as such so that means the slope in this direction and the slope in this direction are the two things which we are talking and then at the back of it a minimum 1.2 meter wide space is being left which again remains the same as it was there Though this is an absolute minimum, where desirably it should have been 1.5 meter, which is missing here. Here there is another type of facility being talked, where uh, the zebra, which is being provided, is at the same level of the footpath, and that's where there is no requirement of any any slope or ramp at this point for the connectivity. But when you are having this table top, then uh, you need to have a slope on this side. So this slope is one is to eight. That remains the same. But what it says is that with respect to this uh, zebra crossing location, there should be a uh, traffic uh, speed coming measure being taken at a certain distance, and that should be as per IRC uh, codes which are there. One another thing which you can see is that uh, there are typical tactile. Uh, tiles being shown and their arrangement has been shown here and it clearly shows you two types of tactile tiles. One is a warning and another one is a directional one. So when you have uh, this case then that you have a warning which says that you can go to either of the direction and then it is giving a warning here or here which says that we are going to approach uh, some other type of facility. So that is also being emphasized a lot. Here, one another measure which is being taught in terms of a calming of a speed is transverse bar marking, uh, which can be there. Again, the number of bars like six at a certain distance, they are already being given in our IRC codes. Then it also talks of uh, uh, doing a bulb out at a location so that the distance which is required to be crossed by the pedestrian reduces out, but at the same time, it allows a uh, a uh, space which can be utilized for the parking of vehicles on the side. So this is an additional thing being taught in uh, uh, those codes. Then here what you can see is that the bus stop is being talked and in this case of a bus stop it is talking about the uh, visual uh, triangle which is there. So if you are sitting at this location then what you are being able to see and up to what level you are being able to see and then at the same time, there should be the different type of facilities which are required for any of the pedestrian when they are waiting for a bus at a location. There should be any space for a vendor so that uh, the requirements of uh, these people at a certain time periods can be satisfied. It is also talking about the size of the shelter, but one change which is there is that though in the case of uh, this uh, hang, 
it is being considered as 2.5 meter, but it was 1.5 meter in the case of cantilever type and 2.5 in the case of box type of a shelter, which here they are showing as 2.5 meters. And this nine meter was four meter in the previous case uh, of a bus shelters. Now they are suggesting we should provide a nine meter. So it is a 2.5 by nine meter space be there. Now, when you have a wider facility, then we have a chance to cross at the back. So all pedestrians who have nothing to do with the bus shelter will cross at the back. But if it's a narrow facility, then uh, this type of feature is going to happen here. So that's in the basis of this, we need to provide different things. So here it is a case of a skywalk and uh, then you have a pedestrian facilities are also being talked in terms of school zones, transit stations and the implementation of the maintenance requirements. So these are few new things which have been uh, brought in in the new codes. When you look at the Indo-SCM, that Indo-SCM further talks about the fundamental relationships in terms of the speed, flow, density, and space for footpaths, stairways, and uh, footover bridges. So they have given the equations, they have given the curves, uh, how they looks like, and they have given the uh, uh, characteristic values of uh, like optimum speed or the maximum flow or the jam density and so on. And uh, then uh, pedestrian alloys is again being defined for uh, these four type of facilities. One additional thing which is there is a shy distance, which was a constant value being usually used as 0.25 meters. Now, for different cases, it is being given and it is varying from 0.1 meters to uh, roughly around uh, 1.2 meters as a distance. Okay, so that's another additional thing which is there. Then the another thing is the walkability index is being talked about and this walkability index is uh, talking about a walk score which is a culmination of uh, safety, security, movement and comfort and these all are again related to different attributes which are there which are traffic volume, speed, uh, police, uh, street lighting, uh, then CCTV, width, uh, surface, continuity, Pedestrian amenities, encroachment, shades, cleanliness, etc. And then finally, it is being uh, changed into a, in an index, and that's uh, like white score divided by walk score, maximum multiplied by six, where they're considering six uh, categorizations. So, using those six categorizations, now they have uh, uh, the category of any walking key surface. But when you look at an Indo SCM, then that Indo SCM is talking in terms of quality of service. And this quality of service is coming on the basis of the perception of the users. And that has been taken in the case of two attributes one is the importance weight, another is the satisfaction rating. And then both it is talking about the physical features as well as it is talking about the user based things. And based on these, it is talking about these five categorizations and giving a score or an index for that so that you can identify how good or bad is the thing. Now let us look at the next thing which is a pedestrian facility environment and this pedestrian facility environment is being talked in terms of uh, multi-function zones, seating, tactile tiles I've already talked about, then utilities, landscaping, vendor zonings and on-street parking. So it clearly speaks of that uh, there should be an area adjacent to the pedestrian walking space where various activities can be done. And here one activity is like the people are sitting on a given benches. It can be used for vendors. It can be used for any other requirements, say the plantation of trees, etc. But at the same time, if you have a barrier type of a system on the other side, then there should be a frontage that zone. And this dead zone may be as low as 0.5 meters or as high as maybe one meter or if required, can be more than that also, but usual values are close. So it's a typical one photograph here, which shows the same thing. And it also talks about the provision of bollards, which are roughly around like uh, uh, 50 to 70 centimeters above the ground. And then you have to provide a space between these. And this space has to be on the basis of a type of users who can be there. A pedestrian, if a lawn is there, then we can have 0.6 meters. But if you have a uh, wheelchair then we should have one meter space for that so here in these photographs you can see that how beautifully the things have been provided here and the outer side 
there is a difference between the carriageway and this facility so they are safe in this direction and that buffer has to be provided and this particular one can also be used for say bicycles here a wide facility is being provided and this uh, is a uh, well, what you can see is a, a redevelopment plan for an area and that's where the pedestrians have been given a weightage at the same time this can also be used for sitting and eating uh, location outside the different uh, vendors facilities here the connectivities are being talked and these connectivities as you can see that uh, here uh, we are talking about uh, uh, a vehicular ramp and which is one is to eight slope that's what we have looked at but what you can see is the way the bullards and way the textile ties have been placed here and uh, this is the crossing facility which is at a certain height as compared to the carriageway so it's uh, usually capped as uh, uh, 150 mm and then uh, this transfer slope at the surface is being defined clearly now which was not there previously so we used to talk in terms of uh, uh, say 1% slope with respect to the drainage. Here there are two cases, uh, one in one case you have this uh, cover at the side where there is a carriageway here and uh, then the footpath here so the difference is as I said 150 mm and uh, this uh, uh, area is being used as a green patch at the same time it is also working as a buffer. Here, what you find is that uh, this uh, access to a facility is there. So there is a building on this side and you have to go from this direction. So if you are bringing it a bit down, you are not bringing it to the same level of the carriageway. What you are doing is that it's uh, somewhere around uh, uh, five uh, centimeters above uh, roughly of this carriageway. So that's what is the value. But when you are on a footpath, it remains as 150 mm or 0.15 meters. So that's the reason you have to provide a slope in these two directions. And that is being shown as 1 in 15 here. Then uh, here, this is a case uh, where you can see that the composition of facilities in being talked. You have a pedestrian as well as a bicycle facility. And the carriageway is being taken away by use of a buffer area and this buffer area has to be minimum 0.5 meters can also be utilized as the green patch. Now this side you can see that how the distances have been maintained between the bullards depending on the user who is there. Then uh, this is uh, another area, another case where the multi-function zone is being utilized not only for the seating places but it is also being utilized for the vending conditions. And then we are doing this, then you can have a utility on this side, but then the way the design is being to be done of a utility is also being talked very clearly. In this case, you can see that the green shades have been provided by way of providing uh, uh, the plants or the trees on this, but then we are talking about two cases. One is for white, uh, footpath another one is a narrow footpath so that uh, pictorial things have been provided for the field engineers and professionals so that we can look at it and we can do it very easily at the same time the parking has been given some weightage here you can see that the parallel parking for a four wheeler and the perpendicular parking for the motorized two wheelers is being talked and at these locations uh, the vending coils, the dustbins, all these things have been also talked about. This is a one case making of area where you can see lot many people are sitting and socializing, which was missing previously. Then if you look at an honest street parking, it also speaks of uh, the priorities to be given and those priorities are changing in this form that first of all, we should give a priority to a cyclist and then finally the priority should go to a four wheeler. And uh, here also one another thing which you can see is that it says that at, at any point of a time there should not be more than five such vehicles parallel parked along the footpath. So that's also a sort of a limit it is speaking it out. And then it also talks about the design the way it should be done so that if there is a disabled person and comes out of the four wheeler then you need to have a space which is additional 1.2 meter and that's where some space has been taken inside in this form. So regular parking is here, but uh, for a case of a disabled person, it has been 
uh, done as an offset. Then signages and markings are one another thing which have been included and there uh, specific colors are now being incorporated which was missing previously. We are using red in the case of uh, uh, certain obstructions, uh, certain warning conditions and we are using greens when we are saying that uh, there's a typical location where the priority has been given to the either pedestrians or the cyclists. At the same time, because we are talking about a combination of uh, these facilities with the motorized facilities, so we are also looking at the pick and the drop points or the locations where you can assimilate these with the, the public transportation. So those are the type of signages and markings which have been included further. So this is uh, these are uh, some broader changes which have occurred in the two of these guidelines. So that's what uh, I have discussed here. So uh, now I think uh, we can go for some discussion on these points which I have presented to you in this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your nice presentation. Now, if uh, participants has any questions, they can unmute can ask questions or they can type in chat box. Sir, I think one question has come from Mr. Neeraj Singh. Okay. I'll read it out. Yes. Uh, he has mentioned, sir, is there any provision for providing space for hawkers as in Indian food parts get occupied by them? If not, shouldn't space be provided near hotspots for such vendors? Yeah, so I have already shown in the certain photographs that uh, we are looking at the multifunctional zone and this multifunctional zone can also be utilized for provisions of uh, vendors. Okay, but then the way the uh, vending location has to be oriented is what will be seen. It should not uh, orient towards the footpath, it should orient uh, away from the footpath so that uh, people are standing in front of that are not creating a, uh, obstruction to the movement of pedestrians and that's where the effective width of the sidewalk will reduce. Okay, so if you have uh, given, uh, you have seen that, then uh, I have talked about, say, if you talked about this vending for MFJ with parking, I think that gives a reply to uh, this question. Sir, another question is, sir, you have discussed regarding psycho, psycho, psychological gap size. Yes. How this is estimated? Okay, so that is being estimated with respect to the location of a vehicle with uh, at a certain flow level and the location where the pedestrian is. So while they are crossing, then using that speed and using the time by which the vehicle will reach there with you at that particular speed, this is being found out. And then a relationship has been tried between those two as I uh, uh, have shown you in that, uh, let me go back, uh, this one. So here you can see their relationships being given for the uh, psychological gap size with the speeds and the volume. So, and that's how they have been calculated. So it's on the basis of the data being taken from the field. Okay. If uh, you need more information on that, and uh, means then you can also connect with Udidja because that's the work of Udidja. Okay. Thank you, sir. So another question is, in uh, estimating the facilities for pedestrian, whether delay to vehicles has been considered? Okay. So delay to vehicles uh, is... Uh, 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 here when you're talking, so when you're looking at this crossing facility, the vehicles has, uh, the delay has been not considered as such for a vehicle, but this, yes, what it is speaking is that we should try to look at the speeds at which the vehicles are moving, and if the speeds are going high, then we should have a higher type of crossing facility rather than Jebra. So that indirectly takes into consideration those delays or otherwise the delay in terms of a waiting time to a pedestrian has been considered and as a most acceptable value has been observed as 45 seconds. Now another question is, you have mentioned level of service. Uh, for example, level of service B for, is different for different land use. Yes. Why it is so? 
Okay, so it's all the, uh, that is again, this is from a particular uh, being study at, done at an academic institution. So uh, what they have replied is that uh, because of the different type of mixes and the way the people are utilizing the spaces, the psychological effects with respect to the uh, roadside developments, there were certain changes which have been observed and then on the basis of that these values were coming so uh, certainly somebody can say that uh, 1145 and 1285 are probably not so different but uh, uh, these are the values which have been given by those studies actually so one more uh, question i'll take i think someone has asked regarding what is mean by critical gap what is critical gap you have mentioned. Okay, this one. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's uh, on the basis of, uh, this is related to the pedestrian and the vehicular movement. So when the vehicular movements have uh, these particular gap values, then uh, that makes so you safe to cross. And these have been computed on the basis of various methods which are available. And uh, in fact, this one is related to the RAPS method only. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, Vivek, then you can, after this lecture, maybe when you have some laser time, you can discuss it with Vivek also, because he has also worked on these methods. So these values have come in into SEM from RAPS method. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. I think we so There are more questions, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, uh, I'll read out next question. It is from uh, Rengam. So he mentioned, hello, sir. It was a nice presentation, indeed insightful. What is the IRC code for pedestrian and where to find the checklist for pedestrian safety? The code for pedestrians is IRC 103. At the moment, we have a uh, addition of 2012, but uh, maybe in this year itself, we will have another revised code and uh, which will have all of these things which I have talked here. Uh, that means you will have IRC 103 2022 uh, probably in this year itself. And what was the another what was the checklist the checklist related to pedestrian safety? Okay, so the that code is talking towards the end about uh, the various things needs to be looked at when you are trying to provide a facility. So that appendix is there, but uh, I have not included, as I said, not all of the things have been included here. I have included only the major things. Now, another question from Naduri. So he has asked how many seconds can reduce with respect to traffic signals? Uh, okay, so uh, that's where you have to look at uh, uh, the speeds actually. Uh, so when you're talking about those speeds and uh, so here you can see that average crossing speeds on different type of facilities have been talked about in Indo SCM, or uh, they have also been talked in terms of a walking uh, speeds. So uh, you have to take into consideration these things. And then uh, apart from that, I have also given you uh, these values. So here you can see that it all says when you're talking at the moment, you're designing it for 1.2 meter per second. But when it, you look at here, it says that we should try to work with a 15th percentile value of 0.95 meter per second. So that means the crossing time is increasing for uh, if you use uh, this type of a value as a signal uh, for signal phasing of a green or screen. So it all depends at what location you are doing and uh, accordingly uh, you can consider. Sir, one more question from Ms. Priyanka. So, Madam has asked, do we have any provisions for pedestrian facilities on non-urban transportation infrastructure? Non-urban transportation infrastructure, um, probably she is talking about uh, inter-city type of a thing. Or maybe rural roads, maybe. Yeah, so uh, like these are the things which can be carried forward, but most of the time you are not requiring those things unless it until your road passes through an urban area. So you have a national highway passing through an urban area may have these requirements, but otherwise they are not required as such. So if you're talking about any high speed facility, uh, if you want to carry forward, you can carry forward from arterial system to the highway system. 
So I'll take one more last question by Mr. Neeraj Singh. So he has asked, "What is the height of raised tabletop crossing?" Okay, so that's 100 mm. I think uh, with this uh, we will end this session. So on behalf of the department and uh, Ramiya Institute of Technology, I thank uh, Professor uh, Restod sir for uh, uh, accepting our invitation and give a nice presentation of one of the useful topic in traffic engineering that is pedestrian. So I thank you sir for coming here and giving the lecture. Thank you sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Vivek. for Thank inviting you. me for this and i hope uh, it has been uh, fruitful to the participants if still they have any query they can always write it to me yes okay. thank you sir okay thank you thank you sir. now to the participants next presentation will start at 11:45 <laughs> so you can join around 11:30 so thank you <laughs>